Good morning, Money.net viewers. Let's talk FX. It's Thursday, August 31st. It is month end. It's Steve Flanagan here with you. You can hit me up on the Scout Chat or on my Twitter handle, sflanagan1979, with any questions or follow-ups you might have. Just returning from a nice long vacation to sunny Florida, and here I am back, recharged, ready to go. Speaking of which, you know when you're trading that mental fatigue, it's very important to unplug and take some time off from the markets. Let your batteries recharge and be ready to go when you return. As always, I wish to educate the viewers with some of the insights and tools that I've learned over my 40 plus years of trading in the FX markets. It's my hope we can all come away with a better understanding of what moves and drives the FX markets. Trading FX is exciting. Seven and a half trillion dollars trades each and every day. Let's jump into the FX news. It's month end. Pay attention. Volatility will be increasing as the books begin to rebalance around 11 o'clock New York today. In the news so far, Japan's economy is no longer in deflation, but deflationary mindset is yet to be eradicated, says BOJ's Nakamura. On the other hand, BOJ board member Tamura says it will take a bit more time to judge whether Japan meets the BOJ price target in a sustainable manner. The Japanese authority in its annual economic white paper said that Japan has seen price and wage rises broaden since the spring of 22, adding such changes suggest the economy is reaching a turning point in its 25-year battle with deflation. Why do I bring these all these headlines up to our viewers? Because, understand, Japanese interest rates are still minus 0.1. They still pursue an ultra-loose monetary policy while the rest of the world has been raising rates. The ice is beginning to thaw, and a change is in the future. Not today, not tomorrow, but watch the yen carefully as these warning signs are part of the elongated process that the Bank of Japan Ministry of Finance will take in changing policy. Why is that so important? Because the Japanese yen has been funding vehicle for the last many years, multiple years, as interest rates have been minus 0 0.1. It has been the short side of every cross carry trade in the market. It will result in a big move. It will result in some destabilization. Moving on to People's uh, Bank of China, PBOC announced on Thursday it will continue to step up loans to private companies in other efforts and other efforts to boost the private sector economy. China's manufacturing PMI improved today to 49.7 from August 49.4, a small improvement still underneath of that 50 boom bust line. On Wednesday, Australia's monthly consumer price flashed a 4.9% year-on-year figure versus the 5.2 that was expected and 5.4 prior. Another lower inflation, follow the trend. Moving it to the European zone, another flashpoint to watch. Euro European zone unemployment stood at 6.4% in July. Let's use some comparison. Imagine if that was in the US. Tomorrow we'll have the US numbers coming out. Expected 177,000 job creation. 
more on that a little later, but remaining at what they call record low levels, suggesting a little bit of loosening in the labor market that has kept the wages growing and inflation stubbornly high and has been one key factor in why the ECB continues to raise interest rates. So the harmonized CPI in the Eurozone was 5.3, same as in July, not much of an improvement, stubbornly high, and will support the ECB raising rates again while the economy is slipping into recession. Germany is already in a recession. Moving into the US, we've seen all the numbers. The most important was the annual CPI core PCE price index, the Federal Reserve's uh, preferred gauge of inflation rose to 4.2, slightly stronger than 4.1, but still in general, on that lower and lower path, a little bit lower than the expected number, but still may create some question marks as to the Fed on hold, although we believe strongly the Fed will remain on hold at their next meeting. Watch this one. The Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank President Ralphie Bostic laid out a case on Thursday against any further U.S. interest rate hikes, saying monetary policy is already tight enough to bring inflation back down to 2% over a reasonable period. Let's let the numbers, let's let the restrictive rates, let's let them play through into the marketplace. We are seeing inflation coming down. Bostic is not a voting member, but he is bang on. And I think that that's something that we want to continue to watch. I believe the Fed will remain on hold. Let's move into the currencies. I want to share my screen and look at the dollar index. We've had a straight up move. We have broken lower. We're a little bit in the sideways. You know how I like to talk about location trading zones, location trading points, congestion zones. Notice where we are bottoming out here. This is where all this price action took place. This should act as good support in this 102.80, 103, the figure level. We're presently at 103.62. Last week's close was 104.13. We are below that, but I do believe it's possible that we retest it. The week before was 103.42. We're right in the middle. But since it's month end, we should be looking at where were we last month? 101.89. So dollar index on a higher course, a little bit of consolidating here as we begin to relieve the overbought conditions. Moving into the euro dollar. I highlight two congestion trading zones here, way back in April of 23 and again in June. Why? Because <laughs> we are looking at July's close was 110.01. June's close was 109.15. And here we are at 108.48. We are below both of them. Well, certainly those releases out of the Eurozone aren't going to support a strengthening Euro dollar. As the world begins to look at the soft landing in the US, a, a stabilizing condition in Asia, but a weakening condition in Europe. We know how the European quasi-governmental entities all buy each other's stock, all buy each other's bonds. This is not a good case scenario here for the euro. Any of the viewers know I am long-term very bearish on the euro. I believe parity is in play and beyond. But let's look at where we are today. Last week's close was 108, the figure. We're at 108.48. July close, 110.01. We're somewhat in the middle. I expect a close somewhere in this lower level. I do not think that the support zone of 108, 2030 will break. I expect us to close fairly close to where we are right now. Sterling, oh, 
great congestion trading zones here. And sterling has popped right back up and has come back off here. 126.66 is off present level. Last week's close, 125.79. July close, 128.35. Throw a dot. We're going to close somewhere right around this present level. I'm thinking that we could see sterling perhaps on some strength as the euro is sold against it. It's a beautiful cross, euro sterling. I expect sterling to close somewhere in this 126.80, 127 zone. Uh, dollar yen, the one that I want to point out, rounding top, another rounding top. We heard the BOJ comments that I said. So let's cut to the chase. Here's my view. 146.60, a critical level on the upside. If we break that, expect to hear from the Bank of Japan. I do not expect intervention, but expect to hear. My view, even though stochastics are turning over, dollar yen can trade lower. My view is that we will see higher before lower, higher because it'll force the Bank of Japan and accelerate this role of perhaps moving this ultra loose monetary policy. Therefore, I look to still buy dollar yen on the dips. 144.40 to 70 is a great support zone. And that's where I look to be buying it. Right now, I'm just respecting that it is a bit overbought and we are seeing momentum trade off. More on the yen later. This is my favorite currency. I will be sending out posts on my Twitter handle. Dollar CAD. Got to do a little bit of attaboy on this one. We had called Dollar CAD to hit an objective of 136.50. Bada boom, 136.39 was the high before we trade back off. We're presently at 135.35. I think this is getting very close to some pretty good buying levels, although we are below last week's close of 139.96. We are coming from an overbought condition. Therefore, I look to buy dollar cat on a on a dip. I have a stop loss of 134.95 on in in hand. I want to watch that carefully. It is possible we could see dollar cat on some sort of dollar um, move here uh, into the month end close trade off, and so watch it carefully. But I am a dollar cat and a bull. Aussie dollar last one. We just want to jump real quick. It's going nowhere fast. Congestion trading zones above 66.29 is our resistance. We're at 64.63. Last month's close 67.20. Very difficult out here, but last week's close 64.05. The week before 64.06. If we get down into that zone, I look to buy with a very tight stop at 63.70, and that's it. Last but not least. The high interest rate currency, the MEX, 11.25% interest rate. Notice the bottoming. We're beginning to have another one of these rounded bottoms. It is on an oversold condition. I don't think dollar MEX is going anywhere. Uh, presently at 1676, I only get concerned on a reversal at 1736. Although, watch this carefully. It's a very crowded long MEX short pick a currency and earn the interest rate. It's a very crowded trade. So that's it for my screen sharing. What I want to finish up with is really we're in month end and computer trading connects all markets today. The most computer connected market is foreign exchange. The volumes when I started in the market were $250 billion a day globally. Today, because of how interconnected, how cross-asset markets are all connected, the currency markets are the fulcrum underneath of the balancing beam of all the investments that global funds take throughout the world. Seven and a half trillion dollars trades in one day today versus when I started. Money moves first. 
we have such a dilemma in the foreign exchange markets. My view is volatility is going to increase and shake the world's FX markets. Let's quickly look. In Asia, we have growth slowing. In Japan, figures came out also slow. In China, we know they go. Yes, today was a slight bit up, but it's still under the 50 boom bust line. China is beginning to ease policy and asking the banks to loan more money in the private sector. They are taking steps. That's a good positive. And I do look that to continue. And I do think that this downdraft in Asia is short will be short-lived. Lowering rates in Japan and China is a very strong positive. However, Japan is beginning to get near the end of its ultra-loose monetary policy. Ba -ba -ba -boom. The tectonic plates under the market will begin to shift. In the Eurozone, the economy is barely growing. Some people are saying, oh, they grew at a half a percent. Come on, Germany is in a recession. The Eurozone in the fourth quarter of last year and the first quarter of this year was in negative growth and in a recession. So we've got a little bit of a heartbeat before the patient falls flat into a recession. Unemployment numbers were not good. So in the US, excuse me, but back up, Eurozone, the ECB is going to raise rates again. Well, if we're not going to say we're in a recession now, we certainly will be. And in the US, we appear to be hitting a soft landing. Bostic's comments, probably he's influential, not a voting member, but very influential. And I think that the U.S. stays on hold and keeps restrict rates at restrictive levels for a period of time and watch inflation begin to moderate. Again, the Japanese had it right. This whole inflation is a cost push as a result of the 2020 COVID and all the lockdowns. And it is now beginning to return back to normal and inflation will begin to come off. Just look at the commodity prices. So volatility in this dilemma of the global markets, something that has not been seen since the 80s and 90s. Remember, the central banks back then took control of the marketplace and they created a stable currency market environment. My view, it's getting ready to break loose again. So watch the dollar yen. It has been a funding vehicle for many years. The floorboards are beginning to creak. Now is not the time to go long yen because I think we'll see dollar yen higher before lower. But I would not be at looking to get long dollar yen for a few more big figures here. I would be looking overall, watching the news. Remember, money moves first. That's a wrap. Let's keep the FX markets hot. I'll see you next Tuesday morning at the same time. Flanagan out.